speaking of like hundreds and hundreds of years ago yeah let's uh let's talk about Anne Boleyn oh good yeah. so I don't know if, if you know who Anne Boleyn is she kind of changed like religious history yeah amongst she, other things well she didn't but the king who wanted to uh boink her yeah uh basically did because he was married all right so may 19th which is today uh 485 years ago today she got her head chopped off so I, I saw this and i was like that's kind of interesting wait who's this person again like mm. what is her story and then i just started looking into it and i was like this is kind of interesting <clears throat> let's talk about it so here is a, a interesting image of all these just looks like royalty just watching on as this show this dude most brutally with a broadsword claymore is that a claymore it looks more like a claymore i feel like it should be a little longer isn't that link's sword in zelda but yeah well i mean that would have a name also okay anyway she's getting her head chopped off yeah then we got another another interesting image like what do you think it actually was Ooh. Um, but she did in, indeed get her head chopped off but i have this article um this is from britannica and it basically just gives a little rundown. So Anne Boleyn, Boleyn also spelled Boulen, uh, she died May 19th, 1536, the second wife of King Henry VIII of England and mother of Queen Elizabeth I. Events surrounding the annulment of Henry's marriage to his first wife, Cap Catherine of Aragon, and his marriage to Anne led him to break with the Roman Catholic Church and brought about the English Reformation. Anne's father, who was Sir Thomas Boylan, later Earl of Wilt Wiltshire and Ormond, uh, after spending part of her childhood in France, she returned to England in 1522 and lived at Henry's court and drew many admirers. A desired marriage with Lord Henry Percy was prevented on Henry's order by Cardinal Wolsey, and at some undetermined point the king himself fell in love with her. Hmm. In 1527, Henry initiated secret proceedings to obtain an annulment from his wife, the aging Catherine of Aragon. Uh, his ultimate aim was to, uh, was to father a legitimate male heir to the throne. For six years, Pope Clement VII, under pressure from Henry's rival Charles V, refused to grant the annulment. But all the while, Henry's passion for Anne was strengthening his determination to rid himself of his queen. About January 25th, 1533, Henry and Anne were secretly married. Married. The union was made public on Easter of that year, and on May 23rd, Henry had the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer, pronounce the marriage to Catherine Null and Void. In September, Anne gave birth to a daughter, the future Queen Elizabeth I. Anne's arrogant behavior soon became uh, soon made her unpopular at court, although Henry lost interest in her and began liaisons with other women. The birth of a son might have saved the marriage. Anne had a miscarriage in 1534, and in January 1536, she gave birth to a stillborn male child. On May 2nd, 1536, Henry had her committed to the Tower of London on the charge of adultery with various men and even incest with her own brother. She tried. She was tried by a court of peers, unanimously convicted, and beheaded on May 19th. On May 30th, Henry married Jane Seymour. That Anne was guilty as charged is unlikely. She was the apparent victim of a temporary court faction supported by Thomas Cromwell. And here is an image of her face. She basically just got uh, got ghosted by the yeah, king. I mean, he was like, she yeah. didn't. She didn't give me what I wanted. I wanted a. Uh, a male heir. Well, there, so now now hearing that side of the story, though, I mean, <clears throat> Aragon's pretty wild. I don't know if you've ever been there, but... I haven't, no. Yeah, I mean, it's plainly beautiful and windy, boring rural country. Where is that? Where is Spain. it? It's, oh, it's Spain? Yeah, it's North Spain. And it's what took over the Arab Caliphate originally. So it was an important you know, political maneuver to marry her. Mm. But at the same time, who knows what she was really up to. And so you don't think it was just like him wanting to... Get, no, down, no, no, get the, down and busy with it. No, you know no, what I'm no, saying? No. The Catholic Church at Some the time. Some hot Spanish girl. So the Catholic Church at that time really kind of arranged which states were getting married. Mm. And it was really valuable because they were fighting the Muslims. And so Spain had just been conquered by these Christians okay. that were under the Catholic Church. And Ferdinand was, uh, you know, like 
kind of a, a simp and they were trying to find other people from other countries that they can marry into and it was a foregone conclusion that the muslims were going to take over england at that point so there wouldn't were, wouldn't they have wanted wouldn't the church have wanted to strengthen the connection between england and spain yeah but the they time? were but they were losing uh control over england and so uh -huh. that's what led to the puritans and eventually led to lord cromwell who became lord protectorate actually this is about the point when the king charles afterwards gets killed and when he's beheaded uh, it's like 1600 when that happens. Okay. Then there's no king. England becomes basically a presidential state. They don't have the Lord Protectorate is their president. Oh, okay. So everything falls apart at that point, and Puritans take over. And so what they're going to be claiming is that anybody who's not part of them is like sinful. So I hear that. But at the same time, people were pretty wild. Who knows what she was up to? And like incest is a pretty royal thing to do. Well, I mean, in other articles that I was reading, uh, they weren't as tightly compact as this kind of summed it up very well like they were all saying that it seemed like it was very unlikely that she yeah. really didn't uh she seems like she's supposed to be a nice lady i mean that's what i've heard and well no a, that she w but she wasn't very nice that's, what, that's also what i'm hearing that's what i was it saying the like feminist she, the feminist like argument that like divorce rates and everything all has to do with this chauvinistic king i think it misses the points of how terrible marriages can be and like she was like you know, she was not raised with love by her royal yeah. family either. She was probably pretty sinister. I reserve the right to say that anyone, male or female, can be t a terrible person. Yeah, that's the woke move. move it right doesn't there. matter. <laughs> anyone, anyone can be a terrible person. Anyone can be an amazing person. Equal opportunity. Anybody. Right? Exactly. I don't. <laughs> I don't care what. I've seen countless different types of people, all different types of people, be rude. And all different types of people be amazing, and you can never pinpoint any one person on anything but, else. So this was Henry, right? Who Henry the Eighth? How yeah. many? How many wives did he go through? The, uh, three, I believe. He so he, he married the third, and and I, I I didn't really look too much into Henry the Eighth. Mm -hmm. um, I know that he mar he married a th his third wife within a month of yeah. this her getting her head chopped off. Apparently, he's a big guy with BDE, but he also had a beard, and he like he looked like he was you know pretty much like the last king who was coherent of England, huh. you know? Interesting, interesting.